Hey guys, Mr. Mises here one more time for our last lesson in um, unit one for AB Calculus Essentials. This is 1-4B, the second video in 1-4, well, where I will talk about limits using direct, um, direct substitution and looking at piecewise functions using some limits. I forgot to mention in the previous video <clears throat> that I had one other example of looking at removable and non-removable discontinuities. So I just wanted to go over that example with you really quick, and it was example number 14. Uh, which of the discontinuities uh, from example 13 are removable? So really we're looking at the graph where we had already determined the uh, x values where we had, where we had um, discontinuities. We just needed to determine now what type of discontinuity it was. So let's take a look at that graph. Let's finish that off, and then I'll talk about the other stuff that we're going to do on this video. All right, so we found that there were discontinuities at x equals 1, negative 1, x equals 2, x equals 3, and x equals 5. And what we want to know is where are their removable and where are their non-removable discontinuities. Well, since we have a... a uh, since we have a hole in the graph here and a hole in the graph here, these two, x equals negative 1 and 2, are removable discontinuities. Okay, since we have a vertical asymptote and we have a break, x equals 3 would be non-removable discontinuities and we can see that again by the fact that the limits do not exist here uh, but they do here okay all right so let's take a look now at using what we call direct substitution so if the function is continuous this is important if the function is continuous at the x values where we're looking for the limits all right so if the, if the limit exists and the limit and the function is continuous there then we can use direct substitution which means just plug in that x into your function so for instance the limit as x approaches 3 of 3x squared plus 2 we're just simply going to plug straight in we're going to plug x straight in here so we're just going to plug x right there okay 3 times 3 squared plus 2 which is going to give us 29 all right, here's something interesting in this class. Once you plug this value in, um, if I say to simplify, then you need to get 29. Otherwise, this is a sufficient value. So you plug that in. That's correct. You've plugged it in. It's fine. You don't necessarily have to simplify to 29. But you know what? Check your teacher on that because if you're not in my class, your teacher might expect you to do something different. But if you just put left your answer like this, I would be okay with that in my class. So um, at x equals 1, we're okay. It is continuous there, so we're going to go and plug that in. So 1 squared plus 1 over 1 plus 1, which is just 1. All right? So either way, you can leave your answer like this, or you can put your answer as 1. So that's direct substitution. Easy peasy, guys. Just plug in x. But the important thing here is that the function must be continuous at that x value for that limit. Let's take a look at a piecewise function. We talked about piecewise functions in a previous video. Um, but a lot of times with piecewise functions, we need to use one-sided limits. And I did talk about one-sided limits in the previous video. So notice here that we have a different function when we're on the left of 1 and a different function when we're on the right of 1. So if we're looking for the limit as x approaches 1, we've got to find the limit from the left and the limit from the right and see if those limits are the same. And if they are the same, then our limit exists and that's the limit. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this up and we're going to find the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. And when I do that, I'm going to use this function here because those are all the values that are really close to 1 but on the left side of 1, right? They're less than 
or equal to 1. So I'm going to plug direct substitution. I'm going to plug 1 in here. And I'm going to get 4 minus 1, which is 3. And I'm also going to do the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. This time I'm going to use this one here. And you know what? I'm just because this might help, I'll use green. All right. So I'm using from the right, from the right, I'm using this function here. So I'm going to plug one in there because it is continuous there. So I'm going to put for that function at one, right? So one, four minus one squared is going to give me three. So since these two are equal, then we know that the limit as x approaches 1 is also going to be 3. Okay, so we've got to do a one-sided limit when we're dealing with piecewise functions. Let's do the next one here. The limit as x approaches 1 from the left of g of x. Well, this is from the left. I'll plug 1 in there. 3 minus 1 cubed is going to give me 2. And then let's do the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. And I plug, that's going to use this one here. I plug that in and it's going to give me 1. Well, so here's the thing. These are not equal, right? These are not equal. And if they're not equal, then this limit does not exist. And we talked about that before. The limit from the left and the limit from the right have to be equal in order for that limit to exist. So for this g, g function, how about the limit as x approaches negative 1? Does that exist? Well, as I approach negative 1, I'm only using this piece right there, right? Negative 1 is far less than, it's less than 1. And so I know that when g of x is less, when x is less than or equal to 1 for g of x, I'm using the 3x minus x cubed function for that whole thing. And I know that's a polynomial that's continuous, right? There's no um, domain restrictions on 3x minus x cubed. So yes, this this does exist, and in fact, I can just go and plug in negative 1 in just for that first one. I don't need to deal with the other one because that's for values that are bigger than 1. For x values bigger than 1, I don't need that one. I only need this because I'm talking about x as x approaches negative 1. So I'm going to end up with negative 2 as my answer. Okay, but again, if you just plugged it in here, I'd probably take that. So you're doing multiple choice, then you want to have negative 2. All right, so the last thing I'm going to talk about here is what we call the greatest integer function. Now, I'm not quite sure you'll actually see the greatest integer function, but it's good to know the greatest integer function does require one-sided limits just to kind of do the whole thing. Sometimes we call this a step or a floor function. Basically, it's uh, the greatest integer less than or equal to a value of x. So, for example, if I have um, f of one half which is the greatest integer of one half what's the greatest integer that's less than or equal to one half so what's the integers are like zero one two three four five whatever right so the greatest integer less than or equal to one half is zero basically just go down okay like 1.4 go down to one 1.8 go down to one okay does that make sense all right hopefully it does so Let's look at this here. Here's the graph. Just by the way, that's what the graph looks like. So what's the limit as x approaches 1 half of the greatest integer function of x? Well, this is 0. We just kind of figured it out right here, right? I can plug it in, and I'll, I'll get an integer. The problem happens when I try to plug in an integer. Now, when I plug the greatest integer function is continuous for all fractional values of x because the fractional value is going to give me an integer. The problem is that at each integer, we have a jump discontinuity. So we have a, um, well, we have a jump discontinuity. So what we're going to have to deal with is at an integer, at the integer, um, it's just not going to have a limit. It's got a jump discontinuity. The limit from the left is not going to be equal to the limit from the right. So this is going to be does not exist. Now, just a side note, if I took the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of the greatest integer function, that's going to be 0. Now, what you could think about on how to do that 
is, and just coincidentally here, not coincidentally, but alternatively, I should say, the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of the greatest integer function is 1. So think about this. What's the number? What's a number that's really, really, really close to 1 but bigger than 1, like 1.00001, 1, right? That's a number bigger than 1 that's really, really close to 1. Well, that's a decimal that the greatest integer is going to output 1. If it's less than that, it's going to be like 0 0.99999. That's a decimal the greatest integer is going to output 0. All right, so you got to do a little bit of numerical analysis when you're when you're thinking about those one-sided limits for greatest integer functions. All right, so in this video, you should have gotten an idea of how to do direct substitution using uh, limits as long as that value of x is continuous. We can use one-sided limits for piecewise functions, either using one part or one part of the piecewise function. And we talked about the greatest integer function. All right, guys, that is it for unit one. We'll see you next time. Catch you later.